Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given an equilateral triangle and two semicircles. And it wants to know what is the area of the two semicircles. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now, because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. So we're trying to find the area of two different size semicircles. Each of these will have a different radius. So we'll call the radius of the little semicircle little r. And we'll call the radius of the big semicircle big R. So the area of the orange semicircle is going to be pi little r squared divided by 2. And the reason we divide it by 2 is because it's a semicircle, so it's half of a circle. And then the area of the yellow semicircle will be pi big R squared divided by 2. And these look important. Let's put a box around them. So next we want to try to create a right triangle because that way we can use the Pythagorean theorem and that usually opens things up. So from this vertex, let's drop an altitude. And in every equilateral triangle, the altitude is the same thing as the perpendicular bisector. That means we've cut this base in half and each of these halves are equal to two. The base is equal to four, so that means these sides will also be equal to four. So we could call this last side x and then do Pythagorean theorem. But I wanna see if we can tie this to this radius somehow. If we connect these two midpoints, that'll give us the mid-segment of this triangle. And the mid-segment of a triangle is always parallel to the base. Here's some notes for mid-segments of triangles. And then another convenient thing, this segment length is little r. Next, we can use the side splitter theorem. Check this out. So here's the Google AI for side splitter theorem. This image is literally my image. I made this. If we click on it, it's at andymath.com. It's from my page. So that's cool. Google AI is using my image to explain the side splitter theorem. I'm kind of curious if this is happening just for me because I use andymath.com a lot. If anybody watching this wants to plug in side splitter theorem into Google, let me know if the AI uses this visual. It'd be interesting to know if this does it for everyone. So by using these rather cool side splitter theorem notes, we know that this divided by this equals this divided by this. And after we cross multiply, we find out that this piece is equal to R. Now we have all the pieces of the right triangle. For this altitude, the little r plus little r will be two little r. And the Pythagorean theorem will give us two squared plus the quantity two little r squared equals four squared. Two squared is equal to four. This two can distribute both to the two and the little r, so that will give us two squared little r squared. And four squared is equal to 16. We can subtract four from both sides. Four minus four goes away, and two squared is equal to four, and we can bring down the little r squared. And 16 minus four is equal to 12. Next, we can divide both sides by four, and that'll give us little r squared equals three. And then to solve for little r, we can square root both sides, and we get little r is equal to root three. We don't need this stuff anymore, and let's return this. Now we're ready to find the orange area. In the place of little r, we can plug in square root of three. The square root and the square are inverse operations, so they're gonna cancel each other out. And we're left with the orange area is equal to three pi over two square units. This is most definitely important. Let's put a box around it and let's move it up here. Next, let's figure out this yellow area and I wanna make another right triangle. I wanna put the right triangle right here. So let's get rid of all this stuff. And we know that little r is equal to square root of three. Let's move the label over here. Now let's create this other right triangle. We already have two sides of this right triangle. And this hypotenuse is the radius of our big semicircle, so we can label this big R. And now we're ready to do Pythagorean theorem again. We have two squared plus root three squared equals big R squared. Two squared is equal to four, root three squared is equal to three, and we can bring down the big R squared. Four plus three is equal to seven, and now we have the value of big R squared. And big R squared is all we need to find the yellow area. In the place of this big R squared, let's plug in seven. So the yellow area is equal to seven pi over two square units. And this is important. Let's put a box around it. And now let's use our two boxes to find the total area. It's going to be this orange area plus the yellow area. Since we're adding two fractions with a common denominator, we can make them a single fraction. And then 3 pi plus 7 pi is equal to 10 pi. And then 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So the total area is equal to 5 pi square units. This is the answer to our question. Let's put a box around it. How exciting. For the next video, I want to do a probability question. Someone sent me this question. I can't remember if it was an email or a comment. They asked if you roll two dice and then you pick a card at random from a deck, what's the probability that whatever you rolled on the dice matches the card? And a jack would be 11, a queen would be 12, and a king would be 13. So I'm going to work on that video next, and I will post it once I solve it. How exciting.